Hi, I'm Binky Griptight for Zounds.com. We're here at Gibson in Nashville. I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I've been in Brooklyn for a while, over a decade now. Um, started off playing blues and blues rock in various bands, but uh, I've been playing soul pretty steadily for the last 12, 15 years or so with Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings, and a few others. Uh, done a lot of sessions with the Dap Kings for uh, producers like Mark Ronson, Bob Rock, uh, played for artists like Amy Winehouse, done some stuff with Michael Buble recently. Um, all sorts of people that you've heard of and maybe not heard of. I've always had a, had a thing for Gibson guitars, actually. Uh, I remember some of my earliest memories were just like looking at looking at album covers, you know, like Frampton Comes Alive, where he's got that Les Paul custom, the three pickup custom, and, and uh, Chuck Berry. I always loved Chuck Berry's guitar. I always wanted one of those. It's still on my list, one of those things to get. We're actually heading over to the, uh, the Rough Mill Mill Room area, where we're going to process a lot of the raw material. Oh, okay, so this is like like where you first receive the exactly. like, logs yep. and turn them into... Turn them into guitars, man. Strings. Exactly, logs with strings. <laughs> cool. The nice thing about, about going to the factory is because, I mean, of course you know that they're all made of wood, but you know it, it's hard to feel connected to the wood sometimes because they're finished. And uh, so it was really nice to be able to see all the, the wood blanks and see the, the chunks of wood that are going to be guitars and see them in various forms of production and, and especially to meet the people that make them. With some of the, the Les Pauls, you know, that we got to see the way they're chambered and weight relieved, because that's always been a big mystery. It's nice to know that, that you know, that it's done with a lot of forethought. And there's, they're not just like taking random chunks out of the guitars. Like they've done testing to make sure that if they take out wood in a certain way, if they do the weight relief in a certain way or the chambering in a certain way, that it makes the guitar sound better. Yeah, it was great to see all the all the stacks and stacks of mahogany. It's gonna turn into the bodies of the guitars. Mahogany is one of the most important woods to Gibson as far as their solid body electrics go. That is probably the most often used wood for bodies. Uh, which they also use for necks in many of the models. So it was great to see all the all the necks being cut into rough shape, and and it was important that we got to see everything from from really from start to finish. But also the most important things are done by hand. Every modern guitar now has a truss rod, which was a Gibson invention. Uh, but without the truss rod, we wouldn't be able to have necks of the. the the dimensions that we currently use, they would have to be much, much thicker to sustain the weight of the strings. It was fascinating to watch the guy put the frets on the fingerboard because it was such a quick and efficient operation. And, and you know, obviously he's a, he's a pro at it, but he's just laid them in very quickly and inserted them into the machine, which, which then pressed them uh, seated them in the fingerboard very firmly and securely, which is done much faster and much better than a person could do by hand. And that, that's like a classic example of one of the things where they use machines to do a better job than, than what actual people could do, but then they use people to do the finishing, to do the finish work, do the important things. Really fascinated by watching the binding being done. Um, they take the body blanks and put them on a mill, which, which cuts a space between the, um, between the top and the body, uh, big enough to accommodate the binding, whether it's a single ply binding or triple ply binding on some of the guitars. But then after that, it's all done by hand. A, a, a trained craftsman has to apply the glue and put the binding in place and then strap it down using this long rope, which is and I imagine that's just the way this has been done since the beginning of when guitars were made. It was great watching the craftsman fit the neck by hand, actually chiseling out the, the neck so that it fits in the body just perfectly so that it lines up straight. Because, you know, if the, if the neck isn't straight, then it's not a guitar. It's just a useless chunk of wood. 
Yeah, the, the room is just filled with guitars. I've never seen so many guitars in one place, in various states of construction. But there's body blanks in one corner that are gonna be guitars in the future. There's guitars hanging from the rafters that are in various stages of being painted. It's amazing. The painters that make these guitars, it's another very important step. It can only be done by hand, can only be properly done by hand. And it's, it's an art. It's not just, they don't just hand a paint gun to anybody. They, you have to really know what you're doing and, and have a passion for what you're doing in order to make it look like an instrument that someone's gonna want to play and want to create with. Another important difference between Gibson guitars and many other brands is that they're finished with nitrile cellulose lacquer only. There's no polyurethane used in any step, not in the base coats or top coats at all. And the importance of that is that it allows the guitar to age rather than just being encased in plastic as many imported guitars are. Another important job that can only be done by hand is the edge scraping, that is, removing the paint from the binding after it's been sprayed with color. Here at Gibson USA in Nashville, they manufacture all of the pickups for all of the Gibson divisions. Uh, and it's important that they manufacture their own pickups, especially the humbuckers, because they invented the humbucker. And here you have different gauges of wire, different types of magnets, and all these different things can be combined in different ways to make very different sounding pickups. So even though some of the pickups might look the same, underneath they're very, very different. And it starts with the copper wire. We use different, different types of copper wire. Um, this is a 42 gauge, and it's got a kind of an anodized coating over it yeah. um, to give it that, that kind of a darker copper tone. Okay. Uh, this would be like your standard copper wire. You're going to see that in a lot of 57 classics. Uh, but it has to do with the number of wraps that are on each right. one of the bobbins. Yeah. Uh, it has to do with the magnet, you know, the magnet type itself. Yeah. Is it Alnico? Is it ceramic? Is it yeah. whatever? Here's where all of the guitars are finished and made ready to be shipped out. And everything is gone over, the final pieces are, are assembled and tweaked and all the guitars are set up and you know they check them for blemishes and there are no seconds. There's no such thing as seconds in the modern Gibson factory. The last step is after the guitars have been tuned up, They're played and checked to make sure they sound as good as a Gibson should. And then they get shipped to you. To go there and, and see all the guitars in the various states and you just grab these body blanks and these things that are just covered with dust, but then you you know once you uncover it you can see there's this beauty that lies underneath. Yeah, it, it was great to go to the factory and see the guitars being made because, you know, when you look at a guitar, it's just like, it's kind of like almost like this abstract thing. You don't necessarily understand, but like a person did that, a person did that. All of this was done by people that, you know, they took this tree and turned it into a guitar. And there's a, a lot of people that are involved in the process and a lot of different steps that are involved in the process. After seeing how they're built, I have a deeper respect for what they do, and now I understand why Gibson sound the way they sound. There's, there's nothing like